Once again, it's good to be in the presence of God and in the presence of each and every person uh, that's broadcast is going out and reach, and I hope it reaches the avenues of your heart. You know, we have a God that's an awesome God. I know he cares about each and every one of us in his perfect love. And the Lord gave me this message, and the title of this message is called The Walking Dead. You know, the people don't understand what death is all about. First of all, there's a natural death, and then there's a spiritual death, and then there's the death for eternity, where you will spend eternity after you leave your natural body that was created by God. The Bible lets us know in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 7, the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. I'm talking to your spirit today. I'm talking to you what's going to last forever. Amen. All souls and all spirits in the keeping of God, only God will have the final say as to their destiny. As I said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, amen, everyone will be judged by God of the things they have done in our bothers, bodies, whether good or bad. What are you doing in your body right now, whether it's good or bad? One day, you will stand before God. I will stand before God. Every human being will stand before God, and we will give accountable, amen, for everything that we have done in our bodies. Well, preacher, I thought you just said God's word says that uh, my body's going back to the dust from where it returned to earth. Yes, I did. That's what the Bible said. Amen. From ashes, from ashes, from dust to dust. But your spirit, the real you, will be living for eternity one place or another. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, he says, All are of dust, and all return to dust again. Verse 21, it says, The spirit of man goes upward. You will rise up. You will stand before a God that will make you give accountable for what you have been doing. And also in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. In the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 54, verse 50 and 54, here we get an illustration, amen, First of all, Jesus was hanging on the cross, amen, and he said, verse 50, Jesus, when he has cried out with a loud voice, yield up his ghost, his spirit, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twine from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept, which died, arose. Just stop for a minute. I know there's a lot of TV programs and there's a lot of horror stories and there's a lot of comedies made about the walking dead. But I want to let you know what the Bible says about the walking dead. Amen. Those that died were in a holding place waiting for the resurrection of Jesus. And when he cried up and yielded himself up, remember that we read there that every soul and every spirit in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 20 and 21 all are of dust, and they return to dust again, and the spirit of man goes upward. Amen. When Jesus rose up, the people that followed after him, after the first resurrection of Jesus, they all came out of the grave. And not only that, they walked on this earth. Get ready here in Matthew chapter 27, verse 53. And came out of the grave after his resurrection, after Jesus, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now, can you imagine living in the holy city of Jerusalem? You knew the butcher, you knew the baker, you knew the lawyer, you knew the, uh, the school teacher. You have family members, you knew grandma, you knew a different one that were serving God, that were righteous people. And all of a sudden, you don't have to go to the graveyard to visit their, their dust. All of a sudden, come walking through the city, coming up there that you could see them, all these people that you knew, they begin to walk through the holy city of Jerusalem. I'm talking about the walking dead. This is in the Bible. 
Most people don't want to hear this, but you need to hear this because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. And they came out of the graves, verse 53, after the, resur 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 yeah, the resurrection of Jesus and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. That was an evidence that many people saw what was happening. It wasn't just a blink or a twink of the eye that nobody could see them. They appeared to many. Many people had this testimony. Hey, I got to meet Grandma the other day. Well, hasn't Grandma been dead for so many years? You remember that butcher that used to treat us real good and died? I got to see the butcher the other day. Many people had the evidence of seeing these people walk through the city. And when the satyrian soldiers that were there with him watched Jesus, saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Now, what are you leading up to, preacher? Truly, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Truly, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ was not just for himself. It was for all those that are righteous. You are turn into the preachers of righteousness, and you're going to hear about some righteousness if you turn into this broadcast many different times and many different programs. The righteousness got the blessings of God. Amen. The graves were open. Many bodies of the saints came out of the grave after Jesus' resurrection. They also went into the holiest city, and they appeared unto many. The Bible lets us know if you're following along in John. Turn with me in John chapter 11. Here we find that Jesus had a friend named Lazarus. Amen. And he died. Now, Jesus was out of town because at that time he was in the flesh walking here on the earth, being tempted like you and I were tempted, but sin not. And the requirement was made from his sisters to get Jesus to come, amen, because Lazarus was sickly about ready to die. St. John chapter 11, when Jesus, verse 29, as soon as he heard that she arose quickly and came unto him, Mary. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. And the Jews that were with him in the house and with her in the house, amen, comforting her when they saw Mary, that she arose and hastily and went out following, amen, her saying, she goes unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come, where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother would have not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came under her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, he loveth him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore said, Groaning in himself, Come into the grave, which it was a cave, and a stone laid upon it, in verse 38. So inside this cave, this grave, there was a stone rolled across it. They put the body of Lazarus. They carried Lazarus in. They had his feet bound and his hands bound, and, amen, with grave cloths, with his face bound with a napkin, a, a sweat cloth, a napkin was put over his face. They carried him in there. People carried him in there, put him in the cave, rolled the stone up. They already had this thing. He died four days ago. He stinks. I got news for you. He might stink. He might have laid there four days, but there's a Holy Ghost power and an anointing of Jesus Christ, amen, that can make the walking dead rise again. And here Jesus puts a demonstration on, amen. He doesn't stop there. Jesus said in verse 39, take ye away the stone. Martha said, the sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he has been dead for four days. It's not too late, church. Some of you have died spiritually. You're not in a tomb. You're not in a cave. But you got a stone over your heart. You harden your heart so bad that you can't hear from God anymore. 
Some of you harden your heart. You don't want to hear from God. You want to block God out. But I got news for you. God says one of these days is appointed unto the man to die and then the judgment. We shall all give account for everything that we've done in our body, whether good or bad. Amen. According to 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, amen. Everyone will be judged by God of the things they have done in our bodies, whether good or bad. Lazarus was dead. Should he not have been judged? No, God wasn't done with him yet. I got news for you. God can still raise the dead. We in the church have watered it down and think God can't no more, but he still can. He can also do miracles, signs, and wonders way beyond what you can even think. Right now, God is speaking to some of you to roll the stone away from your heart. Amen. And I guarantee you, with the stone over your heart, you're already dead spiritually. God wants to bring life to you. Amen. And without God, amen, you know what God thinks of you if you're walking around dead? Talking to the walking dead, the walking dead spiritually right now. <clears throat> God says you stink in his nostrils. Amen. That's some hard preaching, preacher. Well, it's the truth anyhow. But see, God wants to roll the stone away from your heart, just like he did with Lazarus. You know, some people are in so much sin, they're in so much bondage, people say there's no hope for them, it's too late for them. They just said the same thing that Martha said, it's four days too late, he's stinking. Well, I got news for you. It might be four years, it might be four days, it might be four months, it might be 40 years or 40, I got news for you. It's not too late for you. How do you know, preacher? Because you're still hearing my voice. If you can hear my voice, it's not too late for you. God wants to give you life and life more abundantly. And he rolled away the stone. Verse 40, John chapter 11. And Jesus said unto her, Say I not unto thee that if thou would believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. Right there, that word believe. If you start believing right now, the heart that's had a stone over it in your life, circumstances and situations and problems that maybe you didn't even cause I put a stone over your heart. Maybe you have caused a stone to be there. Somebody has hurt you. Somebody has wounded you. Somebody has offended you. And you just sealed yourself in and say, nobody's getting in. There's people that are living inside of a fleshly shell, amen, but they're really dying inside because they will not reach out for help. God wants to help you today. God wants to reach you today. You want to be part of the walking dead? Amen. Just like we read there in Matthew 27, verses 50 through 54, when Jesus rose from the dead, they walked through the holy city. The graves were open. Many bodies of the saints came out of the grave after the resurrection, and they were also went into the holy city, and they appeared unto many other people. They saw them. They had that glorious experience especially for those ones that had loved ones that they saw once again on their way to glory. I got news for you. Everybody that's born again has their names written in the land book of life, even though we might still be inhabiting this earth. We're on our way to glory, church. You want to be on your way to glory? There's a highway you can walk on. There's a broad way in the book of Matthew chapter 7. There's a straight and narrow way, and there's a broad way. Many find the broad way. You know, in the broad way of life, amen, there's sin, there's discouragement, there's deception, there's corruption. It's the flesh walking in it. Many find it, but straight, the word straight means strict. Strict and narrow is the way, and few they are that find it. That is the way that you will go upward and stand before God and not be judged for the wickedness that you have done. You'll be judged for the goodness that you're going to do because your life will change. You'll rise up a new creature. The Bible lets us know you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away and all things become new. When something passes away, what do you do with it? You bury it. Amen. Get rid of those things in your past and let it be buried under the blood of Jesus today. God wants to move on your behalf. Amen. Verse 41, John 11, And he took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou heard me always because of the people which stand by. I say, if they may believe that thou hast sent me, and 
And then he thus spoke. He cried with a loud voice. A real loud voice, Jesus spoke up and says, Lazarus, come forth. Now remember, Lazarus was laying in the grave four days, all bound up. People carried him in. And all of a sudden, Lazarus hears something. People says Lazarus stinks, but Lazarus was hearing something. Lazarus says, I hear Jesus. Jesus is calling me. I want news for you. Jesus is calling you right now. Can you hear him? He's speaking to your heart, your soul, and your spirit right now. Maybe you're laying in that dead situation that you feel like there's no hope for you. You feel like you're in a dead-end street and you can't get out, down in the ditch and you can't get up. Jesus is calling you. He's saying, come forth. They sealed him in. They carried him in. Then all of a sudden, Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. And verse 44 says this, And he that was dead came forth. Talking about the walking dead. Who came forth? Lazarus that was dead. Lazarus that stunk. Lazarus that was bound in grave cloth over his hands and his feet and a napkin over his face. The people carried him in, but Lazarus comes walking out. That's what the Bible says. Talking about the walking dead. He did it before, he can do it again. Are you dead today in spirit? Are you dead today in truth? Are you just laying there, die because of error and complications and evilness or the natural birth? Do your natural birth put death sentence over you? Every one of you that are born naturally, including myself, we all had a death sentence. We were on death roll. Amen. We talk about the prison system many times that people are on death roll. And some people say, yeah, they deserve to get what they're getting. I got news for you. You deserve to get what you're getting, but God made a remedy that you don't have to get what you deserve to get, that Jesus Christ will pay the price for you. And if you ask him to wash your soul and your spirit and your body in his precious blood, he will not only forgive you, he'll forget what ever happened before, and he'll erase it and blot it out by the precious blood of Jesus, and then you come with godly sorrow to him, with godly repentance and godly sorrowiness. God will remove that and receive you. But see, you have a stone over your heart. That stone has to be removed. Jesus said, remove the stone and come forth. Only you can remove your stony heart. Only you can change the situation by calling out and believing on him. And Jesus said... Under the dead, verse 44, And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave cloth, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told the things which Jesus has done. They gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees in the council, saying, what do we for this man do as many miracles? If we let him alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and our nation. Now, Jesus was moving. He was showing his resurrection power. He raised somebody from the dead. Somebody was carried in, came out. Now, people were worried about more than what Jesus did for them, they were worried about losing their place, amen, and their nation that they were living in. The world that they were living in, the type of lifestyle they had, they were worried about losing that. Some of you out there, that's what you're worried about. You're worried about the, the nation you live in, the city you live in, the country you live in, the places that you have accumulated, the things that you're involved in, you don't want to give none of them up because you're afraid you'll lose your place what it took all your life to get in the mess you're in. And that's what the same people did this day. Not all of them, just some of them. Some of you out there are going to harden your heart and you're going to keep the stone right in place. But if one of you, you could be that one, or two of you, or all of you, you have that choice. Choose you this day who you will serve. Your house is not the building and the address where they send your mail. 
Your house is where your soul and your spirit lives. It's called your body that one day is going to turn to dust, but your soul and your spirit is going to rise up and stand before God. You got to go the straight and narrow way, which will lead you to the cross of Jesus Christ. It will lead you to the blood. The old songwriter put it this way What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You need the blood of Jesus. And I guarantee you, it will give you abundant life, life more abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. John eleven thirty nine. 39, it says, Take away the stone. Lord, by this time he stinketh. He has been dead for four days. Verse 17, he said, he laid in the grave four days already. And verse 43, Jesus says with a loud voice, Lazarus come forth, and he walked out. And he that was dead came forth. I don't know about you. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave for all you, that you will make that choice. You know what, preacher? What about people that have died a long time ago? Where are they at today? Where are the dead people? I already told you those that were dead, when Jesus uh, cried out and gave up his ghost, they came out of the grave and they walked through the holy city. I already told you that Lazarus, when he died, when Jesus walked on the earth, it don't matter how many days passed, Jesus just said, come forth, and he came forth and walked. In Mark chapter 2, Nine, if you got a Bible, turn there with me. Here you're going to find out about somebody else. In Mark chapter 2, verse 2, After six days Jesus take with him Peter, James, and John, and leadeth them up unto a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining exceedingly white as snow, so that no fuller earth can whiten them. And there appeared unto them, amen, Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Now, just visualize this. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up on a mountain. All of a sudden, Elias appears. He was not yet dead, but he lived in heaven at this time. Over a thousand years ago, in 2 Kings chapter 2, it says God has taken him up in the heaven. Amen. So far, so far, Elijah is not dead. But there was somebody else that was there. His name was Moses. Some of you heard about Moses. Amen. You have to hear his name somewhere while you were here on the earth. Amen. Now, Moses being dead over 1,700 years, in Deuteronomy 34, verse 5, it says, uh, Moses and Elijah appeared there. Moses died, amen. Elijah was translated, amen. And all of a sudden, here's another dead man walking on the mountain, talking with Elijah, with Jesus, with Peter, with James, and with John. Peter, James, and John saw them. They could be seen. It wasn't just a dream. It wasn't just a figure of their imagination. It wasn't like something you could see through. They could see them. And the amazing thing is, 1,700 years prior to this, he died. But guess what? Peter, James, and John knew who he was. You're not going to be forgotten. People are going to remember who you are. God wants to remember who you are. Amen. And verse 5 Mark chapter 9, Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, is it, good, is it good for us to be here? I can imagine, you know, here I am walking with Jesus, and all of a sudden somebody that's supposed to have been dead 1,700 years ago appears where I'm at with Jesus, and after a while I could see them and I could hear them talking, and guess what? I'm wondering if I should be there too in my natural flesh. But I got news for you. In my spirit, I'm walking with Jesus. In my soul, I'm walking with Jesus. In my flesh, I'm walking with Jesus because those who walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 1, are not condemned. I'm not condemned by God, amen, because I let my spirit over control my flesh. And this is what they were doing right here on this mountain. They were seeing the evidence of Moses, which was already dead 1,700 years, but yet you know, some people say, well, there's the walking dead Moses. I got news. No, Moses ain't dead. He's still alive. Lazarus didn't, 
died this day. He arose four days later, and he was out walking where somebody carried him in. He walked out. All the people in Matthew chapter 27, verse 50 to 54, they've been dead. They don't know how long they've been dead, but guess what? They come out of there, and they were walking through the holy city, and people got to see them and appeared unto many, and they knew who they were. Why? All because of a man named Jesus. Aren't you glad that Jesus cares about you right now? He wants to walk with you. He wants you to come forth. He wants you to realize he is the door. Amen. Hallelujah. He opened up the door of your heart. Jesus is open up to you. Anybody that comes to me, he'll no wise cast out. He wants to save you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to help you. He wants to restore you. He wants to give you life, life more abundantly. He wants to take you off a of death roll. Amen. Because every one of us have sinned, all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. But Jesus Christ said, I'll pay the wages for you. Only you can accept the gift of God. It's a gift. Some people are worried about their dying and what are they going to do with their body. I had people ask me, well, preacher, what do you believe in this? Do you believe in that? Do you believe in cremation? Do you believe in somebody's going to die? How are they going to find me after I die if they burn me and all I am is a bunch of ashes? I got news for you. When you die, you're just going to be a bunch of dust anyhow. There's a fleshly you. Quit worrying about your flesh. I'm talking about the real you that's going to live forever. Amen, that Jesus is saying, come forth out of sin, come forth out of the world, come forth out of that grave that you're living in. Your natural life without Christ is a grave. Your heart's got a stone rolled over it, and you won't let God in, or nobody won't even let your real self out. Why live behind a stony heart when you can have a pure heart, where you can love God with all your heart, and you can seek him? Everyone that seeks God said they're going to find. Everyone. Everyone that asks shall receive. All you have to do is ask him today, and you seek him. I got news for you. If you can't roll the stone away by yourself, he'll send some angels there to help you. Amen. He sent this preacher here to preach to you today. I'll help move that stony heart right now if you ask in the name of Jesus. I can't come where you're at, but these words that I speak, the anointing under the word of God, God's word is anointed. It can remove any stoniness in your heart, any hatred and bitterness and anger out of control, temperance. God will put the fruits of his spirit in there and your whole life will change. You'll become that new creature in Christ Jesus. You'll see the difference when you look in the mirror. You'll feel like when you get up in the morning there's something worthwhile getting up for. Why? Because you just came out of that grave that you were living in called sin. And guess what? Come forth to Jesus Christ and now you'll have abundant life and now you have a purpose in life. Your purpose is do what God created you to be. Every one of you, God created you to be something and to do something. You all have different talents. You all have different abilities. Well, preacher, somebody told me I can never do anything. I can't do anything. I don't know how to do anything. That's not what God says about you. God says you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you and said, come forth right now in the name of Jesus and I will receive you. Turn with me in Luke chapter 16. Here we find a rich man. He dies. Verse 19, Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which it was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. In plain words, he had gained the whole world. He had plenty of money. Anything he wanted to do, he could do. Anything he wanted to buy, he could buy. Any place he wanted to eat, he could eat. But you know what? He had an appointment one day. And there was a beggar named Lazarus, different Lazarus than the one before, amen, just like the different ones of you have the name John, and some of you have the name of Susie, and there's a lot of different Susies and John, there's a different Lazarus, amen. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate, at the rich man's gate, full of sores, and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels of, into Abraham's bosom, which is called paradise at that time, in the lower part of the earth. The rich man also died and was buried. In plain words, they both died the same day. One was very rich and had everything he wanted. The one had a desire to get the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. 
but the rich man didn't have time for him. Amen. But they both died. One was carried to Abraham's bosom, the place where God, amen, just like we read there in Matthew 27, those that were in Abraham's bosom, that were head there in paradise, those are the ones that came out of the city. Those are the ones that walked through the holy city. Those are the ones that many got to see. It didn't say everybody came out of the grave. It's just those are the ones that are serving Christ at that time. They both died. Verse 23, Matthew, Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 16, rather. Verse 23, and in hell, the rich man, and in hell, the rich man, lifted up his eyes, being in torment, seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, saying, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Now the rich man died. Lazarus died. But the rich man could still see. He could still talk. He still had desires. He was walking around in hell, talking about the walking dead. See, you're going to die. <laughs> Your soul's going to die. You're going to be judged, and then you're going to be sentenced. You're going to be rewarded or sentenced. I don't know about you. I'm looking for rewards. Why? Because Jesus gave me a gift that I can receive rewards, everlasting life. By serving him and following him, I removed the stony heart and asked for in godly sorrow for Jesus to come into my life and not only come into my life, to become Savior and Lord of my life. See, some people want him as Savior, but most people don't want him as Lord. You have to make him Lord of your life. What does that mean? Love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul, and everything that's in you. He becomes number one. You're not number one in your life. He is. You lose control and let him have control. That's why your life's all messed up. That's why you're living in the grave right now. That's why you're down there in the ditch right now. That's why you feel hopeless right now. Why? Because you don't have God involved in your life. He wants to. He loves you. He's knocking on your heart right now. He's asking you to open up the door and let him in. There's an artist that painted a picture many years ago. It had a Jesus standing at a doorway, a figure of Jesus at a doorway, knocking. And if you take notice, when that artist ever paint that picture, if you ever get to see one, take note. There's no doorknob on that door that Jesus can open the door. What that door represents, somebody's heart. That had to be open from the inside. Only you can open up from the inside. Amen. We'll roll that stony heart and let Jesus come in. Are you ready to move the, open up the door and let Jesus come in? He's willing to come in. Amen. Where do you want to spend eternity? The rich man was walking. He was talking. Amen. He was making a deal. He's trying to make a deal with Abraham. Let's make a deal, Abraham. Amen. Get Lazarus over there, the one that I didn't care about, the one that I wanted to help. Amen. Now let somebody help me who I would not help. That's what uh, the rich man was saying. I wouldn't help him while I was alive. Now let him that's dead and I'm dead, let the, that dead Lazarus help me. In the natural they were dead. In the spirit they were both alive. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou in the lifetime, verse 25, Luke 16, the good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comfort and thou in torment. Now, Lazarus that was in torment from sickness and disease, now he's comfort. The rich man that had comfort while he was alive, now he's in torment. See how the coin turns? See how the world turns? See how it all turns around? What are you going to be, tormented or comfort? I got news for you. God wants to comfort you right now. And besides that all, and besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, they would come from thence. In plain words, nobody could come from the paradise, nobody could go to hell, nobody could go to hell in the paradise and save anybody. Once you're there, you're there. Then all of a sudden, the rich man, he's concerned about his five brothers. I think back for a moment, the Bible doesn't say anything that this rich man cared anything about his five brothers while he was alive. But now he cares about his five brothers. Verse 28, 
Luke 16. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they come also in this place of torment. In plain words, Abraham, send somebody from the dead to warn my five brothers about this place so they don't end up here. I, can, I don't want to see my brothers feeling what I'm feeling right now. Remember, that this rich man's dead as far as the world's concerned. But he ain't dead. They had a funeral service for him, but he ain't dead. <laughs> I imagine he had so many people lined up and saying, oh, what a wonderful man he was and all the parties he gave and all the good clothes he left us wearing, all the good food he left us eat. But you know what? None of that mattered anymore. What matters now don't let my five brothers come to this place of torment. Send somebody to my father's house. For I have five brothers there. And Abraham said unto him, verse 29, They have Moses and their prophet. Let them hear them. You need to hear this preacher. I'm telling you, if death would strike your body right now, where are you going to be, in comfort or torment? <laughs> are you going to spend eternity... You're going to be alive. Your body's going to the dust, but you're going to be alive. And I got news for you. Some of you out there are listening to the wrong voice. There's a suicidal spirit that's telling people, kill yourself and it'll be all over. I got news for you. Don't you let the devil lie to you. It won't be over. It will just be the beginning of torment like you never experienced before. But like I'm here to tell you, pick life. Choose this day, life over death, blessings over cursing. God gave you the choice. God wants to love you with all he has. He's a perfect love, but he has a judgment. He has a place for those that will reject him. He has a place for those that will deny him. He has a place for those that walked away from him. Don't walk away from God. Some of you out there, you walked away from God. You walked back into the graveyard of sin. God's calling you to come forth. Come forth out of that mess. Amen. And he said, but no, verse 30, and he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went up to them from the dead, they will repent. I got news for you. There is one that rose from the dead. His name is Jesus Christ. And you'd be surprised how many of you out there still don't want to repent. The Bible says you, got, you need to repent. If you don't repent, you're going to perish. What does perish mean? That means you're going to go to decay and die. And once you're dead, you will end up where either the rich man was or Lazarus was. And that Lazarus is no longer down there in the paradise. The paradise is no longer in the lower part of the earth because the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 9, that Jesus went in the lower part of the earth and he preached there and set the captive free those that were in paradise. Well, what if I would die today? You'd be like... A man that was in the Bible, amen, Luke 23, verse 43, it talked about when Jesus was hanging on the cross, there was a male factor on, two male factors, one on the right, one on the left. Remember back to the cross when Jesus cried out and gave up his ghost and all the people rose out? Where there was also another man, the same day when Jesus gave up his ghost, that was being crucified on the cross, one said, get me down off of here. He didn't have the right kind of heart. He wanted to get back down and go to his own grave, amen, his own lifestyle, his own pit, amen, his own ditch, whatever the world had to offer him. He wanted to go back there and have one more time to do this, one more time to do that. But the other one said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And you know what Jesus said to him? This very day, you're going to be with me in paradise. I believe when Jesus went down the lower part of the earth, guess who went with him? That one male factor. Somebody was saying, who's that coming through that, that place down here, that holding place? They said, it's Jesus. Who's that with him? Somebody says, that's the new kid on the block. He just got saved today on the cross. He cried out, have mercy on me, remember me. See, God wants you to say, Lord, remember me. When I die, Lord, remember me. Let my name be written in your land's book of life. Give me abundant life. Give me a chance to get out of this lifestyle that I have created. See, you created your lifestyle. Well, I didn't have to be born preacher. I didn't either. In the natural. 
But I could truly tell you, I have to be born again in the Spirit. See, I had to ask. Do you want to be born again? If you had a chance to start over again, would you be born again in the Spirit? Are you ready to be the walking dead that will be in the resurrection and the anointing and the blessings of God? That we come back to a new heaven and a new earth? We'll be like Moses that will appear with Jesus. One of these days, church, we're all going, but we're all going to appear with Jesus. Amen. On a new heaven and a new earth. We're going to know one another, just like Peter, James, and John knew Moses. Amen. People are going to know you, and I'm going to know them, and they're going to know me. We'll all know one another. But you have to make that choice. Are you willing to make a choice? Are you willing to walk in the things of God? Are you willing to make a decision for God? Amen. Talking about the walking dead. Talking about those that accept Jesus Christ. Glory, hallelujah. I don't know about you. I'm glad that God was willing to love me. Unsaved loved ones, friends, different ones that need to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. As far as east is from the west, your sins will be removed from you if you have godly sorrow. Glory, hallelujah. Are you ready to accept Jesus? Are you ready to make the change? You want God to come where you're at right now and reveal himself to you. He's willing to do that. He's willing to take you just as you are. And he's saying right now, come forth. Come forth. Amen. Realize. You and I must realize that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, according to Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Then we've got to repent of our sins. Amen. Except you repent, you shall likewise perish, Luke 13 and 3. And then you've got to confess unto God. Every one of you have to confess unto God. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is doing wrong, 1 John 1 and 9. Thank you, brother. Amen. And then forsake your sin. Right now you have to forsake just like those people when they saw Lazarus come on. They didn't want to forsake their place and the nation that they were living in. You have to forsake your sins, your place that you're living in without Christ. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and the Lord will abundantly pardon him, Isaiah 55, 7. God will abundantly pardon you. If he pardons you, that means there's no charges going against you. When judgment comes, everyone will get, have to be judged for the things we've done in our body, whether good or bad. There won't be no evil judgment against you if you ask God to pardon you right now. If you confess and believe in your heart, if you repent with godly sorrow, then you've got to receive Jesus Christ by faith in your heart. As many as received him, as many, that don't leave any of us out, receive him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, John 1 and 12. And then you've got to confess. You've got to proclaim something. That you're not going to be who you were when you heard this today, or some of you are going to get yourself back to God. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, verse 9 and 13. Say this prayer along with this preacher right now. Come out of that grave. Come forth. Amen. And then when you die, you'll be the proud walking dead. You'll be the glorified walking dead. Say, dear God in heaven, come into my heart right now. I believe. According to your word, amen, that the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. You said in your word, the Bible, if I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and I believe as pastor today, I believe it right now where I'm sitting, that God raised Jesus from the dead, amen, that Jesus Christ will become Lord of my life and the Savior of my soul. With my heart right now, I believe. I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I, according to his word right now, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for I believe it in my heart, and I confess it with my mouth. And according to your word, if I would die right now, I would not end up in hell. I would end up in the comfort of God to go upward and receive into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name I ask this. Amen. Anybody need special prayer here today for your